Carlos flew all the way from Campinas, Brazil, to join us today, and he was born Carlos Roberto Martins, and um, learned to work at an early age when his father took him from town to town selling goods from their family truck. Carlos was 12 years old when he joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and the missionaries taught him English. After his Michigan mission in Portugal, Carlos married his sweetheart, Vanya. Facing a future of poverty, the couple decided to seek a prosperity with God's help, promising to tithe and be generous with his, their offerings. The first blessing came when Carlos was accepted to come to BYU. He earned a degree in computer science and with the help of the Lamanite scholarship. By the age of 30, he was a company executive in Brazil. Then Carlos was asked by a co-worker to teach him English. Others followed, and soon Carlos was making more money teaching English than he was at his corporate job. So Carlos quit his job, invested in what he called the Wizard Language Institute, and built it into a chain of 3,000 schools, the largest in the world. The business was so successful that so many people associated him with the name of his schools that Carlos decided to legally change his middle name to Wizard. <laughs> but that's not the end of the story. Carlos and Vanya recently sold their business and now look forward to expanding their philanthropy. And we are so thrilled to have Carlos Wizard Marchines speak to us today. Welcome. With the help of the missionaries, at the age of 12, I began to learn English. And those elders encouraged me to prepare to one day study at Brigham Young University. Since my father had low income and my mother was a seamstress with seven small kids to raise, to think of going abroad and study in an international university seemed like an impossible dream. But somehow, those elders instilled in me a desire and a vision that would never leave my heart. When I served a mission in Portugal, President W. Lynn Pinegar, who is also with us at the table here in the front, often encouraged me to attend the BYU. When I returned home from my mission, this became my number one goal. But soon I learned the lesson written in Isaiah 55, eight through nine, that says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Little did I know then that in spite of my strong desire to come to study at Brigham Young University, the Lord had other plans for me before I came to this renowned institution. One year after I returned from the mission, I married Vanya Pimentel, a wonderful young woman who would forever change my life. Two months after our wedding, we suddenly found out that she was expecting not one child, but twins. As you can see, I did not plan for this. And then finally, at age 26, I was accepted at BYU. As a foreign student on campus, I was confronted with serious academic challenges. I had been away from school for a long time. When my first semester grades came out, it was a heavy blow. My grades were very poor. I was overcome by a deep sense of inability, incapacity, and frustration. I was afraid to arrive home and show my grades to my wife. As I walked home, I felt like the child who gets poor grades in school and is afraid to, say the, uh, to face the parents with his report card. I mentally prepared my own defense, how I was going to explain my lack of success to my wife. I told myself that I was not cut out for studying, especially in the United States. It would be better for me just to give up, get out of school. I decided then I was not going to waste my time at BYU. I should go back immediately to Brazil. 
over and over. This went through my head as I walked home. And I, when I arrived at the basement where we lived on Provo 500 North, I quietly went in, hoping to avoid to see Vanya. She was actually waiting for me. With a sad countenance, I showed her my grades. You are right. Some of the grades are pretty bad, she said. I know, but don't worry, honey. I already know what I'm going to do to solve this problem. You mean to improve your grades? No, sweetheart. I've made up my mind. This university stuff is too complicated, too much, too hard. I didn't expect this. So what do you plan to do? And then I said, my plan is for us to go back immediately to Brazil. At this moment, I think this is the best thing that we can do. And then she reacted immediately. After all the sacrifice we have made to get here, you want to pack our bags and leave our dreams behind and go back home now? And what about the goal that we have set for our life? And please, Carlos, don't tell me that we left our home in Brazil in order for you to study in the United States and now you're going to give up after the first semester. And then she added, I don't know how long it's going to take for you, but until you get your degree, we're not going to back home. I don't care if you have to take the same course one time, two times, three times, or as many times as it takes. Until you graduate, we will not return to our home. And then she added this. Imagine what our kids are going to say about their dad. They will know that their father gave up after the first obstacle. What kind of life lesson will that be for them? So, Carlos, keep this in mind. We will leave BYU after your graduation. As you can see, I had no way out. <laughs> and I get emotional to think that if I am here today speaking at this PLC, it's because an angel called Vanya gave me the right support in a moment when I need it most. And if it were not for her, I really don't know what I would be doing at this moment or who I would have become. Regarding the importance of choosing the right person to be our eternal companion, President James E. Faust taught us, we make no greater volunteer choice in this life than the selection of a marriage partner. This decision can bring eternal happiness and joy. To find sublime fulfillment in marriage, both partners need to be fully committed to the marriage. So again, at that moment that I was ready to give up, my spouse reminded me of Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. If I were to follow my own instinct, instinct and thoughts, maybe I would have never graduated from this university or from any other university. But the Lord, in his infinite wisdom and love, knows each of us. In fact, he knows us better than we know ourselves, because he knows us and he knows our spirit from the pre-existence. Since he knows the end from the beginning, he knows our potential in this life and through all eternity. And so the Lord expects more from us as we try to reach our full intellectual, emotional, and spiritual maturity. So in addition to the support from my wife and the assistance from great teachers, counselors, advisors, I finally was able to graduate. I know that you have a great spirit of charity. I know that you have a great spirit of generosity in your heart. And sometimes I know that you as donors, my question, to what extent you are influencing the lives of students on campus. I am here today in the name of all students who at some point receive financial assistance from you 
to express my sincere and deep gratitude for your valuable contribution, for the immense impact that you make possible in the lives of so many. And as the Lord blesses each of us with temporal resources, I consider a great blessing to be able to return, to contribute back to a unique university that has such a noble, unique principles. I don't think there is in the entire world another institution of higher institution such, with such a concern for the spiritual development of its student body as we find here on this campus. With the knowledge and the spirit that we received here, we are able to make decisions on a higher level of understanding, much higher than if we had just to rely on our academic preparation. After graduation, my wife and I had to make another important decision. And now the question was, should we return home to Brazil or should we stay here in the comfort of America? Interestingly enough, now I wanted to stay in America. And my wife wanted to go back home. So we left the comfort and security of a life of, you know, of comfort here in America. And we returned home only with the faith that the Lord would provide for our well-being and take care of us in our own home country. Back in Brazil, as was mentioned here in my introduction, I started working in an American company as an executive. As mentioned here, one day a co-worker asked me, Carlos, can you teach us some English lessons in the evening? So I started teaching English at home for one student, two students, three students. One class, two classes, three classes. Until the moment came, I had no more time available in the evening for one more student. At that point, I had to make a decision between being an employee, a teacher, or becoming an entrepreneur. My wife and I began to think, should we open a school? Dear God, what would happen if I were a rich man? What would happen if I had a fortune? Even if it was a small fortune, would it follow your plans? Thus, imbued with faith and the confidence in the Lord, with the belief that He listens and answers our prayers, I asked, Dear Heavenly Father, what path should we follow? How should we apply the gifts the Lord has given us, even though we do not fully understand what these gifts are? The answer did come. And at that moment, I had an assurance that those English lessons would be my lifelong project. It's interesting how we sometimes receive an inspiration from the Lord and then we want to confirm with our friends to know if what the Lord has revealed to us was right. This happened to me. So I went to talk to my friends to see what they had to say about my perspective of opening a language school. And now I ask you a question. I want you to guess, try to imagine what my friends told me then. And what you're thinking in your mind, they said, Carlos, you are crazy. Don't do this. There's a lot of competition in the market. And now is a bad time to start a business. We are facing an economic crisis. And some even said, Carlos, please remember, there is no bright future in teaching. Can you imagine what my feeling was at that moment? I really did not expect this negative reaction from my friends. So what did I do then? I confessed to you that I went home and I cried. What did my friends do then? Ha, 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 ha. I knew that he was going to give up. I knew that he was not going to go too far. I knew that this plan was not going to work. Well, time passed by. And today, I am the one that laughs. laughs. What about my friends? Some of my friends cry. <laughs> and why is it that some of my friends cry? Because maybe some of them also had some plans, projects, ideals, dreams, but they were so focused 
in their inner fears, in their imaginary ghosts that they never gave themselves a chance for, them, for their dream to be realized. So now you know how the wizard school uh, was initiated in Brazil. Not only wizard school, but later on, we made acquisitions of other companies so that we built uh, the largest uh, group of education, bilingual education in the country, with a total of 3,000 schools, generating approximately 50,000 jobs, uh, serving approximately 1 million students each year, present in several countries. And as some of you know, last year, uh, our company was sold to Pearson for the amount of $700 million. Our capacity for planning and envisioning our future is very limited. We only can see with our natural eyes. We just see a short distance ahead. But the Lord, in his infinite love, care, and wisdom, can see gifts and talents in us that we ourselves sometimes cannot see. And then if we are humble and seek his divine influence in our lives, the Lord will lead us by the hand to paths that in our wildest dreams we could have never imagined. What began as a modest project of teaching English at home in the evening was the embryo of wizard schools, which in turn became the largest chain of language schools in the world. As the result of an earnest and sincere prayer made all the difference in my personal and professional path because I knew that at any moment I could fall back on that same source of inspiration for support, guidance, direction. In spite of the controversial opinions from my friends, that answer to my prayer gave me assurance, confidence and strength to persevere on the path the Lord had already prepared. Because all of these miracles, large and small, I cannot help but recognize the hand of the Lord guiding me in every step along this journey. When I think of the impact of BYU had in my own business career, in my profession, I am motivated to contribute to this marvelous institution. When I think of the love and the mercy of God in my life, I feel inclined to show love and mercy to all those people around me. Thank you very much.